Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a Gosu game from the Gosu Gamers Replay Pack sent to me by Lazaros a few years ago. This is the second to last one in the Replay Pack, so enjoy the Gosu while it happens. I need to make a playlist for these if I haven't already. Top right, we've got ourselves a Red Terran. It's going to be Fanta. And on the bottom left, it's a brown Terran, whose name is Didong. So, I don't know. Someone's from the Shield Clan. Someone's from the Emdai Clan. We've got uh, Sun Yu watching this thing, a clan mate of Didong. We're on Andromeda, which is the name of a constellation or a galaxy or something to do with space. I know that much. The Andromeda Galaxy, I think. So, we got an island expansion at the top and the bottom of the map. Got a fairly easy to wall off expansion on the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions, but walling off against Terran when you are Terran is not very recommended. And yeah, it's a very, very weird map. I've cast games on this before. Yeah, so you have a minerals only expansion that is very, very easy to take and easy to defend, but it's minerals only, and if there are tanks down here, gabla, say goodbye to your minerals only base. All right, man, so it's a TBT featuring a lot of tanks. Woo, some wraiths, we got missile turrets, we got vultures flying around, and maybe battle cruisers. Hmm. We might see some battle cruisers here. This is a crazy long epic TBT. Again, part of the Gosu Gamers Replay Pack. For those of you who are wondering, Gosu just means excellent, high quality, high skill. So something in this game got gave it the Gosu tag. I don't know what it is. I don't know if this comes down to like the player who wins has a supply depot remaining, right? That's all they've got left. It's come down to some crazy base race. Or I don't know, maybe it's because it's just mass battle cruiser versus mass battle cruiser. Maybe it's some weird, weird TVT strategy that we never see anywhere else ever in Brood War. And that's why it got the tag. I just don't know. I have no idea. I'm as blind as any of you are. Although some of you have probably maybe gone through the Ghost of Gamers replay pack before, and so you know what this is. You're like, ah, I've been waiting for Falcon to cast this one. But uh, yeah, here we are. Here we are finally getting to it. This is, you know, a bit of a shout out to my buddy JLC as well. He's been a long time subscriber of the channel. Uh, just a good dude. Canadian dude. Well, you know, a lot of Canadians that I know are good people. And he loves TVTs. And he loves battle cruisers. So I can't promise you, JLC, this has BCs, but it's a long TVT, so the odds are good that it does. And I think giving you good odds here is about as good as I can offer you. As far as the battle cruiser play goes. So anyway, both players, giant four player map, they're gonna make a marine for safety and they're gonna go right into factory. It's exactly what's happening on both sides of the map here. Looks like Phantos is a bit earlier. Perhaps scouting SCV from Dong gets killed. I'm gonna call him Dong, and I wanna call him J Dong, but it's not J Dong, it's just Dong. D-Dong, in fact. In point of fact, what's going on? Well, I feel like we're going to have some time to chat in this cast, you and I. Whoever the heck is listening to this thing. I just finished watching game six of the NBA Finals. Fantastic game. Just really fun series. A lot of runs back and forth. Both teams definitely felt like they belonged, but it just seemed like the Warriors had more Finals experience than the Celtics did, who'd never been to the finals before. I don't think anybody on the entire Celtics team had ever played in the finals before, and that experience just seemed to show up more and more as the series wore on. So the Warriors win it in six. You know, losing the finals in six games is no great shame. Losing it in five or four is like, ugh, did you really belong? But six is good. Six is a good number. Not seven. Seven's the best for us viewers. Seven will give every fan of the teams in the finals a heart attack. But, you know, six is good. Six is a fine number for sure. That was fun. Watch it with my brother. He really wanted the Warriors to lose because he's a bit younger than me. He only really remembers Warriors dynasty type stuff in the NBA. Golden State's been very good. They've won four titles over the last eight years. So it's a lot of Golden State and he's sick of it. But also, I don't know. Boston has like 17 rings. And I just, I'd rather the Lakers and Celtics not get any more rings to add to their pile. I'd rather teams that have fewer rings than they do get victories. And I know it's dumb because the Celtics haven't won a title since 2009 or something like that. So it's not like they're swimming in rings here. And before that, it was the 80s. So again, not like they're swinging in rings. But, you know, it's, it's just it's just how I feel about it. I'd rather that Boston sports area fans not get any bigger heads than they already do. 
Because, I mean, since the year 2000, they've won nothing but Super Bowls, and they've won World Series, and they've, you know, they've just had incredible success in every sport. The Bruins have won a Stanley Cup. So it just, it's ridiculous. Are we opening Wraiths? Okay. So Fanta's opening Wraith, which is a little bit odd for sure. Usually the players go for tank lines, and then somebody's like, all right, fine, this tank line stuff is dumb. I'm going to go for Wraiths now. And then they start pumping Wraiths off of, like, five ports. So this is a two-port Wraith straight-up opening here from Fanta. I like it. I like it a lot for TVT, because who's going to bother making anti-air in the first ten minutes of a TVT? Nobody is. Nobody's going for Goliaths right now. We've got Vultures. We've got Spider Mines. We're going for Siege Tanks at some point, too, I guess. Uh, although, we got a Starport coming in here, too, from Dong. The problem is, if this is him attempting to drop ship Vultures into the enemy base, it's going to be a bad time. Oh. Well, look what we did. We just ran Vultures right across the map, and we saw the Wraiths, and we were like, oh. And we see. So that's why Wraith production has begun from D-Dong now, and this Wraith, man. What's he got? Two kills? One kill. He ends up with one kill. So it's kind of like, mm, was it really a big deal that the race got in there and caused, or the, <laughs> the vultures got in there and caused some problems? Not really. It's 20 to 23 workers. A couple wraiths have died. Yes. So, ah, a couple vultures have died. Yes. No wraiths have died yet because nothing can shoot up yet. Although I guess we'd have an enemy wraith here from D-Dong. So we are going to see some wraiths dying. Whether it's his or whether it is, uh, it's Fantas or D-Dong's, we don't know. Anybody can expand yet? Uh, not really. So here come the wraiths. Dun, 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 dun. Cloaking is on the way from D-Dong. Fanta's not bothering with it. He doesn't have a control tower yet. Intriguingly enough, he's just going to show up here with regular wraiths. He's going to wait for wraiths to pop out of the starport. Ooh, canceling cloak would be pretty fantastic for him. Actually, can he... Uh, he's got a lot of wraiths. They don't do very good ground damage, especially against buildings. Oh, Cloak finishes before the control tower dies. Hmm. Okay, but you can't pop out with enough energy to... Oh, you can actually instantly Cloak. I forgot that. You can't instantly Cloak when you pop out of there as a Wraith. So, neat stuff. Oh, did he just... La he landed a barracks here, and he's got a Marine, and he's trying to kill the starport. That's hilarious. Cloaked Wraiths chasing non-cloakable Wraiths? <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely incredible stuff here. Hilarious. Yeah, so running for his life. You'd think the person that got Wraiths first would have Cloak, but nah, he's still working on it. A little bit late to that party. Throwing up a turret. Oh, man, he's getting a commsat station. He doesn't He doesn't even have an engineering bay. I would really recommend getting a turret here. So is this... Wow, is this TVT that doesn't make any tanks at all? Actually, no, there is a tank on the field. Or there was a tank. There are a couple tanks on the field. From Fanta. Hmm. Second base on the way here from D-Dong at the same time that Fanta's expanding to. So all's well that way. Nobody's falling behind an economy, which is a fantastic place to be. Although you don't know that at the time. You don't know what your opponent is doing as far as expanding or not expanding. Can be pretty scary stuff. This tank is like, no! Run! Kill the vultures! Kill them! The wraiths are here to kill the vultures too. Killing the SCV building the command center is super duper annoying stuff. If you're Fanta. And then the cloaked wraiths come in. But we have a scan. But you just run away from the scan. Oh, not enough. To oh, wow. That scan range was further than I thought. And two of the wraiths go down to the bigger wraith ball. Again, cloak trumps bigger size balls of wraiths every day of the week. But now, guess who also has cloak? That's right. Fanta totally does. So we're just going to go right into wraith ball versus wraith ball at eight minutes. That is the start of this game. I like it. It's a different twist on TVT. I was so setting myself up for just long times of nothing happening but tanks staring at each other. Like for 20 minutes, 20, 25, 30 minutes of this game. Ow. Ow. Okay, fine. Forcing, forcing them to cloak. We can do that, says Fanta. We have cloak available. And then, oh my gosh, more harassment up this way. As the second base is not happening for Fanta. And it is for D-Dong. Although the command center is under direct fire by six wraiths. I think it'll be okay. I think killing it's going to be very, very hard. Oh, trying to kill the SCV. Oh, the SCV building. This missile turret dies. This is crazy. This is a really exciting opening to this game, and I was not prepared for this at all. Woo. It's like midnight. I just got back from watching an NBA game. I'm not quite in StarCraft headspace, and I'm like, a TVT, a long TVT sounds good. You can get some stuff done. And uh, nope, it's been crazy. 
It's been right crazy from the very start. He says. Okay, so working on more wraiths. Actually, getting a second factory here. This could be for Goliath production. If one of these players go for goes for Goliaths, I would not say no to it. Because, again, the extra range Goliaths have are very good against wraiths. Wraiths air to ground range is basically zero. What are we doing? Just more starports, more wraiths being produced. We just kind of skipped all the tank stuff. It's like some gentleman's agreement they had. Okay, we're just going to skip all the tank stuff in this TVT. We're bored of it. We're sick of it. Let's move on. We're just going to go right to the wraith section of this game. And I kind of like that idea. <laughs> And I feel like more Terran should have that agreement. It's like, do you like playing the tank the tank portion of TVT? No. Nobody does. Nobody likes playing the tank portion of TVT. These tanks are like, shut up, Falcon. Everyone likes siege tanks. We're the best. Look, you are awesome. You have a great sound when you unsiege and resiege. It's one of the best sounds in all of StarCraft. And you're very strong. I get that. But man, tank versus tank is so hard to break. And you just sit there. You line up here. And then your enemies lined up over here. And you stare at each other. And it gets very boring. Ooh, what's that movie? Is that a Disney film that's stuck in my head right now from when I was a kid from the 80s? We stare at each other all day. It's very boring. Oh, what is it? I want to say it's vultures talking. Is it the vultures from Robin Hood? That doesn't sound quite right, but it's that same kind of banter. We used to sit around and stare at each other all day. It was very boring. I gotta... Okay. I gotta find this. Hey, look. More Wraith shenanigans. Pow, pow, pow. They're trying to fight against tanks. It's kind of working, but then the Wraiths show up and Vultures are like, Alright, fine. We're horribly outnumbered here. Come on, internet, help me with this. Oh, it's Little Mermaid. Scuttle says it? Fair enough, it's a scuttle quote. I was thinking bird. So it was a bird, but it's the seagull, Scuttle, who says it. And I think it's him trying to explain the human relics that Ariel, Ariel finds, <clears throat> like forks and stuff. To sit around and stare at each other all day. It was very boring. I think he finds a pipe and he calls it a snarf blat and it plays music. Anyway. Yeah, Little Mermaid. Okay. That is accurate. 89, I think, is when that came out. Boy, I'm all over the place today. So, Wraith versus Wraith battle. 89, I mean, 90 to 92 supply. Both these players are doing fine. They both have two bases. They both have Wraith balls that they're using to micro... <laughs> Micro against each other. Hey, Caron boost is on the way from D-Dong. Love it. Love the Caron boost upgrade. I said someone would go for Goliaths here, but just because they outrange rates by a metric mile. Ha <laughs> ha. A metric mile. Everybody in the world except Americans was like, oh, that hurts me. Americans are like, yeah, that makes sense. Because I, <laughs> I am an American. All right, look. Now you boys need to make the decision. Mm -hmm. Wraith time is over. It was fun. We gotta poke at each other a little bit. Now we're gonna make battle cruisers. And then JLC will be very pleased. And he'll be pleased, and I'll be pleased because he is pleased, and you'll be pleased because you like battle cruisers too. One of the most watched videos on my channel is Artosis versus LHZB, I think is the name. Wherein they both went BCs, and it was a 45 minute TVT, and it was really good. It was awesome. So I'm hoping this thing will maybe live up to it. Live up to. The play. If you like TVT and if you really enjoy Battle Cruisers, look that game up. I do have an Artosis playlist if you want to check that out. Uh, Artosis versus, I want to say LHZB. Maybe there's a T in there. Anyway, Battle Cruisers, man. If you like Battle Cruisers, it was such a good game. Such, such a fun game. Ooh. Yeah, every once in a while, I have people who watch Artosis' stream be like, Oh, that was an amazing game. You should cast it. And then I contact Artosis, and he's like, Sure, here you go. He's the nicest guy. I know he gets really grumpy on stream, and he hates Protoss. But seriously, he is nothing but pleasant to me anyway. And all I'm doing is asking him for favors. Why is there a pylon? <laughs> what is 
is going on with this map? Why is there a JPEG of a pylon floating out in the nothing space on this map? That's weird. That's super weird. All right. Well, um, this SCP came down. Mined that mineral and then... Pachunk! Gonna expand here. So the reason that mineral patch was there is just so you can't just build a command center here, float it over, land it, and you're done. You have to get drop tech. I'm pretty sure that was our guy scanning. Yeah, it certainly was. It was Dong scouting. And he's like, no. No, you can't have this. How about the 12 o'clock? Maybe. There's only one missile turret saving it, though. I, that's not really enough for the number of race that there are. I love this. Free shots. The Goliaths are like, pow, 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 pow. Yeah. Free wraith kills. Oh, the bottom right expansion from Fanta here, too. Left side expansion for Dong is done. So both players are expanding well. Both players have 300 APM. I don't recognize these names, but you know what? There's a bajillion Korean players out there that are worth casting. All right. So you're going to fight against... Why are you fighting against Goliaths? Don't do that. Don't do that. Who's winning this thing? Well, Dong won that thing real handily. He's got Goliaths, man. That helps him a lot. Oh, he snuck a dropship down here to the 6 o'clock while there are wraiths about. Oh, no. If Dong comes back in and checks this thing, he can wipe this thing out again. But nope. That's not happening. Huh. Weird. So yeah, we're just gonna split this map in half, I guess. This bottom right base is Fanta's, the top left base is Dong's. Although taking the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock, feels like Fanta is trying to uh, encroach here on D-Dong's territory, which is not gonna be very well received by D-Dong, I must, I must say. This Wraith Ball, man, killing tanks? Dude, these Goliaths are gonna wander in here and wipe this thing out. There's nothing to stop these Goliaths. Oh, this is great. Didong up 149 to 111 supply. He's got... Oh, he is making siege tanks. Whoa, he's making a lot of siege tanks. He's like, hey, I am going to make the siege tanks in this game. Ha 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 ha. I broke our, agree our agreement, which uh, I don't know if they actually had an agreement. I was making that up. But it'd be funny if it was. If Tong was like, ha I'm making siege tanks. And Fanta's like, well, I made siege tanks too. Traitor. It's, oh, no. They both are bad at each other. Cool. So right side base doesn't happen for Fanta at all. Keep thinking someone's trying to take the center here, but no, that's not happening whatsoever. There are simply spider mines in the middle. Top left getting taken. There we go. By D-Dong. So splitting the map here in half makes sense, except for, again, the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock belong to Fanta, which is bad for D-Dong. He really can't allow that to happen. Vehicle weapons getting researched by Fanta, so he, you know, he's committing to this ground stuff here. Plus one attack's already done for D-Dong, so it's cool. Oh no, the cloak! The cloak is here! Uh, what? And then Fanta loses all of his race after picking off maybe a few of the race of D-Dong. So D-Dong is way ahead. He's at 140 supply to 117. He doesn't have as many workers as Fanta does, which actually might be a problem for him in the later game, as the economy of Fanta continues to be awesome. Hmm, are we doing the tank stuff, boys? Are oh, making more factories? It sure seems like it. Science facility on the way here, too. But yeah, hit that like button if you're enjoying this one so far. This helps the YouTube algorithm know that I'm here. If someone's hitting the like button and you're interacting with the cast in some way, leaving a comment helps, too. If you want to support me, you can do so at patreon.com slash falconpaladin. If you want to support me on an ongoing basis on YouTube itself, you can click the join button down below. If you'd rather just do a one-time donation, you can do so at paypal.com by sending you know, a buck, whatever you want to do, to falconpaladin at gmail.com. That's a one-time donation, not recurring. You don't have to worry about uh, coming out of your bank account every month, which I know some people are not into. So options, options abound. All right, cool. So did we end up getting the tank stuff that I was not... I was not interested in. I wasn't. I was. I was ready for it, and then I wasn't ready for it, and then it came anyway. And that's interesting, isn't it? Keep watching the production tab. Remove some battle cruisers. You've got the starports for it. Got some control towers here too. Oh, one, one control tower anyway, which doesn't indicate we're even gonna try and make any battle cruisers, but maybe. 
I mean, the first thing we'll have to see is the production of, you know, battle cruisers. Well, control towers first, and then the battle cruisers. SCB transfer of doom? Was he just trying to free up? He's trying to free up supply? Nah, he's not maxed out. He's only got 64 workers. You think he would want more than that? Oh, he did a drop down here. He did a beautiful drop down here to the south for the six o'clock. He's gonna wipe this thing out, but any resources taken from this place are an excellent advantage that Fanta has after Dedong, because this should be Dedong's resources. And if he comes down here to try to save it, I don't, why is he sending? Oh, these are here to absorb initial tank shots so his tanks can get into position. And man, we've really turned this thing into a very traditional TBT, haven't we? Maybe more Goliaths than we usually do. But all right, fair enough, I guess. <laughs> Goliaths over here at the three o'clock trying to cause some problems, but they're gonna get overwhelmed and outnumbered and gunned down as well. Ciao, tanks firing on missile turrets. Goliaths firing on engineering bays. a nice push from Fanta. I don't know if he's trying to get in a position where he can save that 6 o'clock base or what, but it seems to be going pretty well for him, I would say. Yeah, this is great. Siege tanks, both players have the plus one attack. Plus two attacks on the way for both of them. D-Dong's going to have a bit of an upgrade advantage here soon for a few minutes anyway. I think he's got an angle if he wants to maybe drop in there and save that 6 o'clock. Yeah, moving your tanks into sieged up tanks, even if you have numbers, is just not a good idea. So he's got to shove him back. Got to shove him way, way back. Kakaru floating up here. Kakaru! Kakaru! That's right, Kakaru. You're doing well, Senor Kakaru. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm surprised that D-Dong hasn't taken the time to completely wipe the six o'clock out. Anyway, command center tries to escape and D-Dong says, I have Goliaths in the neighborhood, so that's not happening. Goodbye. Goodbye, Centre du Command. So, hmm, after going from a nice, nice base count advantage here by Fanta, he's now down in base count. There's so much brown is on the map right now, all along this left side. He hasn't taken this minerals only base yet, but I'm sure he's going to do so eventually, quite soon, in fact. And expanding down this right side seems like something he's thinking about anyway. He's got tanks in a nice defensive position, but no... Oh, he does have SCVs in the general neighborhood. All right. All right. Oh, no, no, no. You could go top left. Actually, tanks on the high ground. So look. Tanks that are sieged up on the low ground are hard enough to break if you're Terran, but tanks on the high ground are just extra stupid difficult to try and break. He's making drop ships, Fanta is. I, don't, I think I'm rooting for Fanta because he is so gutsy and taking the 6 o'clock and the 12 o'clock at the same time. It kind of makes me want to root for him. And I don't know if you are as well, but maybe you are. Who do you choose how to root for in a TVT where you don't know either of the players? I guess is the question. Spider Mines in the middle. Oh, a little collateral damage there, taking down an Ursodon, it looks like, based on that blood splatter analysis that I like to do. I feel like Dexter. Man, Dexter, oh, Dexter and Game of Thrones, I think are my two biggest shows that were insanely great and then fell on their faces and were poop towards their final seasons, right? Oh, Dex, I really like Dexter a lot. Anyway, uh, trying to hold the middle here is Fanta. His dropships are getting wiped out by Goliaths, which is bad. Siege tanks trying to defend the dropships with their lives. Ooh, nice stutter stepping forward here, though. And repair. Repair. Oh, Goliaths die, but tanks re-siege into position. This is scrappy. 
This is scrappy as all scrap, scrap, scrap can be. Even the sound of a siege tank attacking when it's not in siege mode is just great. It's good. So yeah, I think part of what's going to make this game Guso, Gos, Gosu is that every scrap of minerals on this thing is going to get mined from by the time all is said and done. We're only 25 minutes into this thing. We've already had so many bases taken, so many minerals mined. We've mined out of the main base already on both corners of the map here. Yeah, boy, did we move right into a really standard TVT today, didn't we? We did. There's tanks all over the place. They both have plus two attack. Nobody's working on plus three right now, so that's okay. You don't go for plus three and your opponent doesn't go for plus three, then you're fine. Who needs an advantage? This is a lot of dropships. This feels doom droppy on this six o'clock here, which I don't know that he needs doom for it. There's literally a tank and two goliaths in the... Place, and I guess that's a missile turret being produced, but you could show up with like four tanks and two dropships and probably take it down. Where are they? Are they Are getting loaded up? Are you loaded up? No, they're completely empty dropships. Okay. I mean, loading them up before you have to, just asking for a bunch of wraiths to swoop in and wipe them out, which is just like the worst way to lose units is inside a dropship where they can't defend themselves at all. And you put them there. That is a nice missile turret wall set up here, dude. He's like, well, I can't get in here and take down this 12 o'clock. It's way too well defended by a million missile turrets. Can't hit with tanks because of the way this map is designed. You can't hit this with tanks. Maybe a tank here with vision. Tank range is really good. Oh, big push here from Didong right through the middle, though. Are you ready to rock? Are you ready to rock? Ah, uh, beautiful tank positioning here from Didong, though. He's like, yeah, you thought you were safe in this spot mining, but no. No, you were not. These dropships haven't done anything. Unless they transferred SCBs down there. Maybe that happened. Blah. Blah. Tanks. Causing problems. This base in the bottom right, natural, is under siege and likely going to die here. I'm not sure what. Fanta can do to save it, unless he does a big old drop on. Oh, this is what I was worried about. Is he's the, yeah, he has to unload. Ah, ah, unload! Hurry! Oh my gosh! Siege up! Siege up! Oh no, we're getting killed anyway. But at least they're going down fighting. Oh, they're taking. Maybe taking some shots. <gasps> is he tank dropping on enemy tanks? <laughs> he's tank bombing with tanks. Okay, that's fun. Maybe that's why we got the Gosu side of this thing. Is the tank bombing play. Is the zealot bombing you've seen, you know of. But tank bombing, maybe that's new. Does anyone ever bother dropping a tank on enemy siege tanks to cause problems there? Oh, Fanta definitely 100% has. Hmm, free Goliath there. This command center, for some reason, is not getting constantly attacked. I don't know if it's because he doesn't actually have vision on it or not. Uh, oh, he can't actually see it unless he scans it. Okay. Reasonable. Reasonable play. That would explain why this command center is not actually dead. <laughs> Zelda sitting on the plus two attack, plus one armor upgrade. 
And yeah, this is more the sense that the map is split in half, right? If D-Dong has this 6 o'clock and the 12 o'clock is held by Fanta, then the corners are held by opposite players too. And yeah, we've split it in half. That's it. Half has been achieved. Taking the center is going to be a big deal here. It looks like Fanta's going for it. And we're just in the tank position. Fanta is rebuilding his Wraith Ball. He's going to make four of them at a time here. And again, the enemy has the Goliaths. I'm just not sure this is the most genius of ideas. APM for the player, D-Dong, is dropped to about 220 or so. Fanta still a roller above 300, which is a pretty good mark. That you're a good player, right? If you can play StarCraft at this level and you have 300 APM, then you're doing all right for yourself. I mean, you're not going to beat Flash or anything, but I mean, how many play players can beat Flash? Is that even a fair comparison to make? No, I'd say Fanta here is, you know, he is an excellent, excellent StarCraft player. Is he elite? No, or I'd know his name. But he's an excellent, excellent Terran player, and there's got to be some amount of pride in that. You could probably brag to your dates about that in South Korea if you are an excellent, excellent Terran player. All right, going to try to mine from this middle here. What is this SCV doing? Okay, that SCV wandered into Nowheresville and got absolutely murked. Trying to take down this entrenched tank position by doing the drops. Oh, it was the dropping play. Dropping tanks on tanks play. Fantastic. But then a million more tanks from Panta show up, and he's like, oh, this is a bad position for me. Says D-Dong, it's time to get on out. Is that a baby Rhinodon down here? It is. It's a Rhinodon that's been scaled down like 50%. Baby right it on. D-Dong threatening this bottom right-hand corner with some tanks decides to back it out instead. Go back to the original position that they were in after they did, in fact, wipe out this natural expansion for the bottom right spawn location. It is race and it is upgrades from Fanta here. Ship weapons coming from D-Dong too. He's also building Goliaths while getting ship weapons upgrades, which, okay, he's planning on it. Shh. Sure, he must surely be planning on making more air units, otherwise why would he get air attack? I don't know what tanks are firing. Is it you? Is it you who is firing? See, then the wraiths. Ah, the cloaked wraiths come in. They snipe. Oh, before the scan comes up. That was a really solid timing move there. Pull back. Pull back to where the Goliaths can't hit you. The tanks are trying to go to where the Goliaths can protect them. Ooh, killing that dropship would be pretty good too. Get it? Yes, dropship sniped. He's trying to sit back here and take down siege tanks. There we go. It is Battle Cruisers from our friend D-Dong. Not building them here. Where are you building these battle cruisers, sir? Perhaps where they will not be scouted. One, two, and three. Three battle cruisers are on the way. Love it. Love the battle cruisers and a long TVT. That's what we're here for. That's what you're here for. That's what I'm here for. Is the long TVT and the battle cruiser experience. Yeah, so I mean, at this stage, I think everyone's just going to sit back and be very busy mining. Oh, the Wraiths just sacked themselves. I don't know if to free up supply or what, but Yamato's coming in. Yamato gun on the way from D-Dong. It looks like Fence is thinking about that. Again, he started the ship weapons upgrade before D-Dong did. I don't know if there was some silent signal they gave to each other. All right, it's time to go back to air stuff. The tank stuff's been fun, but let's go back into air units. You know, battle cruisers and stuff. There we go. First battle cruiser on the way from Fanta. As well. Is he building from his original star ports? He is. He's building from his original star ports. Not ones that he built somewhere else. Which just feels like, I don't know, a little more homegrown, you know? A little more homegrown on the battle cruisery side of things. Wow, big attack from D-Dong, though. Are you trying to expand here and all you have to defend it is a single Goliath? That's not going to work at all. But then more siege tanks come rolling in and. Ba Boom! Big hits on these Goliaths. Ow. Ow. Stay out of range. Stay out of range. Command center. Flee. 
One of the greatest advantages that Terrans have is that their command centers can flee when they're under attack. Oh, Fanta. Wow, this is a sneaky drop location, man. This is a good drop, too. Over here at the 9 o'clock position, going to kill some SCDs at the very least, and this is a really, really aggressive position here. Oh, the battle cruisers are going to try to save the day. We didn't bring enough Goliaths with us to actually defeat this many VCs, but maybe if they split, maybe if they mic... Okay, they're not really micering all that well. And in fact, the battle cruisers do kick butt and take names here. And goodbye all of these siege tanks. It was a good idea. The drop was. The drop was a great idea from Fanta. But, uh, no. Tank's dead. So we're up to making four battle cruisers at a time. It is Battle Cruiser City here. How often do we get a TVT where both players are going mass BCs? It's not very often. I'm gonna give it a not very often tag. This one tank is still sitting up here. It's like, you can't get rid of me. I was here before you. I was here before the days were... Oh, you're just flying into missile turrets now, huh? Okay. Well, you're doing your best. But it's not... Oh, one of them made it through with 6 HP. Totally worth it. <laughs> totally 100% worth. D-Dong says, I have the battle cruisers first. I get the center base. Let's go center base. Going for Colossus Reactor, which is extra battle cruiser energy, is D Dong. Excellent. Very, very good stuff. Dropship of D Dong's gets completely sniped out as it flies over Goliaths as well. So, yeah, this is close. This is going to be close. As far as banks are concerned, Fanta has a bigger one. I think part of that is he was able to mine some of the minerals and gas from this southern base at 6 o'clock before D Dong was able to get to it. So, technically, that was stealing minerals from his opponent. Where normally it would be a very solid right down the middle arrangement. But, you know, also the fact that D-Dong is taking the center can overcome that for sure. There, was there a disadvantage down here at the 6 o'clock? Yeah, but he can more than make up for it by taking the center with double gas and eight mineral patches here. That's pretty good stuff. These aren't incredibly, incredibly rich mineral patches. They're 700 and, like, what, maybe, yeah, 750 it looks like. Well, there's 749. How's that possible? I think 750 on the mineral patches makes a lot of sense. You know, as opposed to these ones are 1500. So it mines out quickly, which is actually kind of nice. Because the longer you sit here, the more likely it is that somebody wanders in here and murders your face. Yeah, tank line. But the tanks know that their days are just about over. The battle cruisers are getting produced in bigger and bigger numbers. Everybody's maxed out. So killing tanks to make room for future BCs is going to be a fine thing. Killing SCVs to make supply room for extra BCs is going to be a big deal here, too. There you go. That tank gets some kills, but he can't feel good about it because those SCVs were told to die. They were commanded to die. Yeah, so here's where you could make a little bit more aggressive plays with your tanks, right? If you lose them, so what? You're just going to replace them with battle cruisers anyway. So it's all good. It's all good in the hood. Battle cruisers that are brown today have one one upgrades. Battle cruisers that are red today have one one upgrades. They're both working on two two, and traditionally they will go back to a three three. Yeah, SCVs transferring down. Might as well just mine this thing out as fast as SCV humanly possible. Center getting held. I keep coming back to this. Although, I was wondering if this was going to happen. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, friends. Blah, 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 blah. Center no longer belongs to the D-Dong. Unless Fanta spares it, which maybe he's planning on doing. I don't know if that's the case. It doesn't seem like it actually. Doesn't seem much like it at all. SCV, wow, how'd you get, wow, that's a very brave SCV getting all the way over here without dying. Sure, he died eventually because he was going to die eventually. There's really just no getting around that. And then he uses tanks to kill this instead of the battle cruisers, which I think maybe he's worried about 
getting caught with an EMP or something, but EMP is not done for Dedong. He's working on the upgrade. It's a great upgrade to have if your enemy's tanks or enemy's battle cruisers are all stacked up. You EMP them and the Yamato ability is gone, son. You don't get any Yamato. You don't get Yamato, and you don't get Yamato, and you don't get Yamato. This traditional harassment position of Dedongs is pretty strong stuff. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, so center belongs to Fanta now, but I mean, he doesn't really have a command center here, so does it really belong to him? Battle Cursor say, the time of the tank is at past. It is at past. So that's 12, 13, 13 BCs in the red group here from Fanta. And this group is, well, it's 12. That looks like a 13 there, too. He's, kill he's killing his own SCVs to make room for supply. As we've seen a bunch of that today. Players being like, oh, I don't need 60 SCVs. Let's knock that down to 40-something and we'll feel much better about it. Excited for Ragnarok Love and Thunder that's coming out soon. It's by Taika Waititi, and his last Thor movie, Ragnarok, was like maybe the most fun entry in the entire MCU, which is like 25 movies at this point. So that says a lot. He resurrected the character of Thor, just made him more relatable and funny. And again, relatable and kind of sad for reasons that make a lot of sense that really stuck with us through the rest of Thor's characterization. So he completely unlocked Thor for everyone. I'm excited to see what it continues to do with Thor here. Also, the Guardians of the Galaxy are in this thing, as far as I know. So, that's what I've heard anyway. And I like the Guardians, too. So, this will be they had really good chemistry in Infinity War. It's the, one of the most fun things about Infinity War is the different groups that ended up working together. We got to see how they'd react to each other, how they play off each other. And that first scene where Thor just splats himself on the windshield of the Guardians' ship. And they bring him inside. It, everything from un that happens until Thor leaves the ship is... Hilarious. It's very good. And even after that, where Thor continues to call uh, Rocket Raccoon Rabbit, just in a very serious, non-mocking tone, he's just, you're a rabbit. That's what you are. Deal with it. Uh, I like Infinity War a lot. I like Thor. I like the Guardians. That's what I'm saying. I should get money from Disney for talking about the MCU and talking about Star Wars projects and stuff. Throw me like five bucks, Disney. How about it? How about it? I'll contact your guys. You talk to my guys. That'd be great. Yeah, I really think this game is going to come down to the center base will exist. It will have a smattering of minerals left at it, 750 on some of them. And that's the money that's going to matter here. But of course, both players also have big banks. Fanta surprisingly has a smaller amount of gas than I would expect here, only 600. But I guess Didong only has 2,000, so he's not exactly rocking it on gas either. When you're making 300 gas BCs, well, it's going to be part of it. Killing his own siege tanks to free up supply here too is Fanta. Mass Battle Cruiser versus the Mass Battle Cruiser. That's what we're here for, baby. Okay, so at some point, you have to fight, right? <laughs> am, I, am I completely wrong? 
in my assumption that at some point you guys have to try to murder each other. And since you're not all that compelled to try to murder each other's bases, which I think is probably the smart thing to do. I guess trying to murder each other's army is a fine way to go too? See the scanning here that Fanta's doing. You can see the scanning here that Dong is doing. They're just keeping tabs on each other. Trying to see who their enemy BCs are. And Fanta knows he got scanned on his BCs. He's like, ah. Well, let's reposition somewhere else, I guess. Yeah, killing his own tanks now as D-Dong as well. He's got 3-3 three, three upgrades on his battle cruisers. 3-3 exists here too for Phantom. So fully upgraded BCs. We're going to vehicle weapons, vehicle plating, vulture movement. Why not? Just get all the upgrades today, says Fanta. And you never know if maybe some speed vultures will come into play, right? Yeah, EMPs are going to be huge here. Defensive Matrix, I think, will be a big play too. How the models are employed is a really big part of Battle Cruiser versus Battle Cruiser fights too. I like this atmospheric track. Ah, I love the sound of battle cruisers in the morning. I just needed a quick look at the old ones for a second there. Hope you don't mind. Fanta Pokin. Okay, so he's crossed the invisible divide between these two players. He's going to try to... God, you don't want to get your science vessels EMP'd first. Juking. This science vessel gets an EMP off on, like, two. Okay. I guess. That was fine. Ah, oh, that was a much bigger EMP by D-Dong's science vessel. Which is still alive, mind you. ha <laughs> For some reason, Yamada's coming back and forth like crazy. Are there any Yamada's left over? I don't know. Nah, who has more supply right now? It is 140 to 140 supply. Reinforcements coming in from D-Dong though. That seems bad for Fanta. But that said, Fanta has more supply available. He's doing a really good job target firing. There you go, one by one individual battle cruisers here. Which is definitely something we're seeing from D-Dong too, but I think Fanta's doing a better job. Yeah, these missile turrets are not really an obstacle, but they're just trying to help their battle cruiser friends out a little bit anyway. Yeah, just parking right on top of each other and just smashing go. Smashing the attack button inside that battle cruiser bridge. And uh yeah, it's not a it's not a massive win today from Fanta, but it's a win. Battle cruiser count is currently four to zero but six are being produced by fanta six are being produced by d-dong and d-dong's gas bank is knocked down quite a bit here isn't it lads lads and lassies Yeah, here we go. Battle cruiser, battle cruiser, battle cruiser, battle cruiser, battle cruiser. All in production. Ooh, also a nice little round of Goliaths here too from Fanta. D Dong doing the same thing. Not gonna be caught out, not having his own battle cruisers. He's good. 
It's good to go. Center getting retaken here by Dong. He knows he needs gas. I mean, Fats is spending his too, though. Both players have sat down at 30 SCVs. They're like, okay, if we keep this mineral stuff going and keep the gas thing going, which is really important because Gasping Geysers, when they're expired, still return, return to gas per trip. So we'll get infinite gas. It's really the minerals that we can run out of here in this game. And that's going to be what's important, I think, when all is said and done here. So yeah, we got a lot of build up for some really nice battle cruiser on battle cruiser action there for sure. Now we're gonna have a Wraith versus Wraith battle cruiser versus battle cruiser play. I think all in the same arena. Uh, I guess you're just gonna let this thing die then, huh? Yeah, I mean that's 400 minerals. Okay, he canceled it, so we got a refund. But still, that wasn't free. You're down to oh, you prepared for that. You have 31 SCVs. After losing that one. So you made a couple in preparation for losing that guy in the middle, I guess. Now let's see if Fanta wants to try to hold the center. Because, hey, someone should. Like, this mineral patch has still... This mineral field right here has not gotten anything mined from it at all. This entire game. It's insane. It's insane. I don't remember those, that vulture speed we were talking about earlier. Okay, I'm going to try to take down some of those missile turrets. And there we go. Goliaths. Bruh, big hits. Big swings. Battle cruisers in the play here. Oh, man. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. The real time lighting. Both players, Goliaths, are going to town on the enemy BCs. But unfortunately, D Dongs are all gone now. But there's a ton of Goliaths down here for D Dong, which means his BCs have to pull back, which means. His friendly Goliaths are trying to save the day here as these are trying to run. And they're going to try to fight. They're going to try to fight. There's only four of them. They're very injured. And with good kiting, you don't have to take any hits from these battle cruisers at all. So D Dong's like, aha, take that. Bow, pow, 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 pow. Another one bites the dust. Dun, dun, dun. Another one bites the dust. And this one's going to die too because it's slow and stupid. It's not stupid. It's just slow. It's not his fault that it's slow. It's just was. It just came that way. So now nobody has the gas to make six battle cruisers at a time, which is a problem. But you do have money to make as Goliaths and Vultures and another SCV from D Dong. I don't know why on earth he thinks he needs another SCV. But you know, he's way better player than I am, so I'm gonna trust him. Oh, now he's up to 300, and Fan has dropped down to 250. How interesting. So yeah, the time of the big battle cruiser battle is over now. Now what we have remaining are some Goliaths and a handful of BCs on both sides. And by that I mean there's one for Fanta and three for Didong. So having three Yamatos available is super good. But he's almost there on these guys. 150 is the magic number. Remember what I said about gas? It's infinite. If you're given enough time, all your expired Vespine geysers will return to you enough gas to make another BC. If you keep spending on Goliaths, you'll never save up enough to make another BC. Who is going to take the center? That is the deepest, darkest question of the day. One hundred six to one sixteen supply. Army values are pretty similar, but the Goliaths. I'm not sure how useful they are. They're trying to throw down spider mines, but the enemy has scans. The enemy has Goliaths that outrange the spider mines immensely, and that's certainly not a problem for them. Hmm. So mineral income available here down south for Dinong is going to be at six o'clock, whereas these two bases are looking fairly healthy. From Fanta. I don't know. Place your bets. I wish I could do a poll. I do polls on my Sunday streams, which you should catch if you're if you're missing those. At 11 a.m. Eastern every Sunday, I'm casting Brood War. Whether it's viewer submitted replays or professional replays. We also play, you know, UMS games live on the channel too. Maybe some 4v4 fastest. Okay, Goliath versus Goliath battle. Defensive Matrix is up on the right side here from Fanta. He's got some science vessels to give a little bit more oomph. Oh, but his battle cruiser died. Those Yamatos I was talking about earlier from D-Dong are really, really useful. 
The Goliaths are doing their best here, but they're just not equipped to take down... Well, the Vultures are not equipped to take down the Goliaths, is what I'm trying to say. It is 85 to 68 supply. D-Dong, I think, is going to win this battle, but my gosh. More Goliaths showing up here. Both players just pumping nothing but them Goliath boys. It's another BC down. Another one bites the dust. And another one's down. And another one's down. Another one bites the dust. So Battlecruiser count is now zero for everybody. The time of the battle cruiser is now sincerely over. Is either player going to be willing to save up enough gas to make a battle cruiser in a situation where Goliaths rule the day? That doesn't seem like a very smart idea at all. Both players are getting pretty broke. This top left corner, not looking hot. I guess this is nice. This is a good source of minerals. There's only like five SCVs on it, though, of the 30. That is kind of the problem with dropping your SCV count. Is now it would be nice if you had like 60 SCVs. Maybe not that many. It'd probably be too many if that were the case. But you could fully saturate these mineral patches and these mineral patches. And be pretty happy with yourself. Again, two bases available down here for Fanta. I feel like this one's been available forever. Hi, caramba. So, I don't know. Place your bets. Like I said, on the YouTube live streams, I can place a poll down. And you guys can vote on who you think is going to win and things like that. In this case, I don't know, maybe just put a comment out. At 56 minutes, who do you think has this one? D-Dong has more supply. Yes. He's got technically more workers. Yes. Fanta has more gas. He's making tanks with it to deal with the enemy Goliaths. This game has just gone through so many permutations. It started with Wraiths, and then it went into Tank Goliath, some Vulture, and then it went into Battle Cruisers, and then it went back into Goliaths, and now Mass Goliath. And now we're going back into tanks after intentionally sacrificing a bunch of tanks earlier to make supply for battle cruisers to free up supply that we don't need freed up anymore. We are both under, we both have over a hundred available supply in this match. So, I mean, you do the thing to get up the battle cruiser count to where you want it to. And if it turns out it's just an even Steven play, well, smokes, <laughs> smoke stacks. <laughs> Isn't that a problem? So yeah, place your bets. Leave it in the comment. So at 57 minutes, do you think Fanta's going to win? He's the red Terran. Or do you think D-Dong's going to win? He is the brown Terran. And I guess we'll just have to see, won't we? Because I don't know. I'm trying to eyeball this thing and figure it out. I think the science vessels existing for Fanta are going to be a big part of this. Defensive Matrix getting tossed down on Siege Tanks and Goliaths is going to really help them win a battle that maybe they were outnumbered. For, uh, for winning, right? But maybe they can because of the spell casting. As I say, in a lot of StarCraft games, if you can spell cast and your opponent can't spell cast, you're probably going to win. Not every time. I will tell you, I did cast a game recently on the Patreon channel. Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin between Best and Hero. And Hero employed a very non-spellcaster strategy that, by golly, worked. And it was kind of crazy. Anyway, here comes the Goliaths and the Siege Tanks, and this is really problematic for this bottom right. Again, this is the income that Fanta is relying on to win this game. So Defensive Matrix tanks are up, taking tank shots, but surviving more tank shots than otherwise because of the aforementioned Defensive Matrix. Ah, yes, winning. Winning, says that tank commander. That's not how they sound. They go, ready to roll out. So he sounds like this. Winning! Uh, yeah, that's what he's going for here. 80, 90, 95 supply. D-Dong still has an advantage. Look, he's trying to take the center in this chaos. Fanta is, by the way. Is this more? Oh, some Goliaths wander down to murder the SCVs of Fanta that aren't doing so hot. There are only 23 of them now, down from the 30 that they were for so very, very long. So very, very, very long. This is a lot of defensive matrix siege tanks, and D-Dong's like, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like these blue shiny siege tanks much at all. Mm -hmm. 90 to 95 supply. Numbers wise, I feel like Fanta has an advantage here, but the defensive matrix is wearing off as it will do. And then, do you have enough energy to cast it again? The answer is no. Uh, yes, sort of. Not everybody. Yeah, center. <laughs> Is anybody in this game going to hold the center? 
Where is it gonna end before that is even a thing? God, it'd be so funny. It'd be so funny if nobody took the setter for any real length of time. I would honestly be having all the SCPs down here mining this, rather than, like, just take these two, bring them up here, be mining these. These are the more vulnerable positions. Nothing has attacked this base all game. Several things have attacked this base. It's more exposed for many reasons. Yeah, this is a pretty Terran favored map. There are a lot of spots to put tanks and wreak havoc. All right, so that's tank line, which has reformed here at an hour and 29 seconds. Left side of the center expand, right side of the center expand. Defensive matrix tanks up. They need to go into position where they're taking tank fire so they can do tank fire. That is sort of the trick here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, I like that. That works out. Yeah, so two tanks can one-shot another tank with the upgrades. Actually, can they? Yeah, they can. They definitely can. They're going to try. Sneak up. Sneak up, boys. Ready to roll out. Defensive Matrix, Defensive Matrix, wop, 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 wop. I don't, I mean, is anyone going to clear anybody out from this position anytime soon? What tank lines are all about is that very thing. Can you do the, th no. I love this command center positioning from Fanta, though. I like this a lot, actually. On the right side, it's back. He can mine these right side minerals. The left side minerals are off limits, and this gas is, too. Ah, love that scan. Beautiful scan. Bah, scan gone. So he knows what's over here. He's keeping a close eye on it. He gets scanned. Does that make him unsiege? No. But it does make him scan in a second. Ah, oh, lose that battle. That's not good news. 123 to 113 supply. There is just more mineral income right now. Thanks to the center patches getting mined and this and this compared to the, again, undersaturated mineral patches down here at the 6 o'clock for Didong. This one's fairly well saturated too, but is anybody there? You go. Someone is working this mineral field, yes. So the tank, the tank experience of your lifetime has arrived. Hmm, Fanta's going for dropships. Interesting, but for what end? You're gonna try to dr You're gonna try to drop on these tanks. I guess he could try to tank bomb tanks again, which is, you know, it works pretty well for him the first time, and it happened to him, too. This is just absolutely edging forward. Ah, Dong's got his own science vessels now. This is just so nerve-wrackingly patient from both of these players. They just, both of them are just like, okay, if I make a mistake here, I'm in a lot of trouble. So here's our drop ships. That has to be what this sit. Nah. Nah, I thought he was going to drop on top of these tanks. Instead, he's heading down to one of the only sources of income that D Dong has. He's going to try to wipe it out. Which I think he's been able to do at any time, pretty much, for the last 45 minutes. But now is what he's doing it. Or when he's doing it. Okay. So SCVs for Didong are going to get wiped out. Like I said, this is a really important source of mineral income for Didong. It knocks him down to effectively one base source of income. He, nope, he's not doing the thing. He's not mining from the center ones at all. Oh, this is bad. This is bad for Didong all of a sudden. He's only got, as far as minerals go, this. Wait, just kidding. 
one SCV on these two mineral patches inside the main base at the, again, natural minerals only location, which is weird. So the six o'clock, a very hotly contested base today. It got taken by Fanta first, D-Dong took it, and now Fanta has retaken it. In the name of Fanta's everywhere. Maybe Fanta Strawberry, because he's red. Fanta Strawberry is actually a good soda. You don't get many kinds of strawberry soda in America. Turns out, D-Dong's like, all right, time to go. He's being forced in this engagement. He's going to defensive matrix up his boys. Boosh. Oh, yeah. Getting some scans up there. Taking some hits. Doing some hits. Fanta decides maybe to push over, but no. He decides not to commit instead. Turns away. Keeping his Goliath in reserve for something. I don't know what it is, but it's 133 to 116 supply. Fanta continuing to be ahead right now. Science vessels can't hurt each other. I guess they can EMP each other, but that doesn't really count as doing true damage, is it? Maybe it is real damage. Maybe it hurts them emotionally. It removes a lot of their functionality. In fact, most of their functionality, because they can still detect things, but they don't have energy anyway. Man, I keep thinking that Fanta has this, and I've been rooting for him the whole game. Then I look at it, and it's too close an army supply. Didong has fewer SCVs, which means his army value is bigger. Oh, Fanta! Remember when I was like, nobody's going to save up for a battle cruiser anymore. Fanta's like, shut up, Falcon. I'm totally going to save up for a battle cruiser. Battle cruisers are sweet. You leave them alone. Didong doing a really nice siege forward here. Scans are just the order of the day in TVT. Constant, constant scanning all the time. Same thing in StarCraft 2. If you blunder into a tank line in StarCraft 2 with your tanks, with your units, they will die and you will lose the game. So scanning to know where your opponent is at all times is an incredibly important skill to have in this matchup. Look, it's important to know what your opponent's doing in other matchups too, but for some reason in this one, it's just wandering into siege tanks and dying is the whole deal. I mean, obviously Protoss and... Uh, Zerg feel the same way about wandering into two sieged up siege tanks. But it's just, uh, Terran has the ability to handle it, I think, more easily than the Protoss and the Zerg do. Hundred minerals left on the mineral patch inside the main base. Got 500, 200, 500, 800 over here at the top left location. Minerals only expansion. Mm, 1,044, 92. Not exactly amazing. Pushing again, 153 to 130 supply. Fanta. I, you know what? I think he has enough here to just kind of walk into that and attack. But oh, look at this setup back here. He's like, hey. All I have are four tanks. Why don't you come wipe them out? That's what I would have done, and I would have been stupid. Because look, another huge group of tanks is back here. Are we going to get remaxed out after losing the max 30 minutes ago? Maybe. Seems like a possibility anyway. Yeah, these battle cruisers take forever to build. Oh, is it just making more? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Dude, sneaky battle cruiser tech switch for the second time today to win the game would be a pretty Gosu thing to do. It's risky. Definitely risky as all get out. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. 167 and 140 supply, both players producing it's tanks for Didong, and it's battle cruisers and tanks for Fanta. Yeah, Fanta taking... Oh, he took it, too. He took the 6 o'clock. I think that's it. I think that's the nail in the coffin, is him taking the 6 o'clock, uh, not only destroying it for Didong, but taking it from him is kind of a huge deal. But Didong, mining from the top left here. Okay, so he's actually starting to mine from this mineral field that hasn't been mined from yet. Fresh minerals. There's only four patches there, but he needs to do something to make up for the fact that he lost this. And he lost this. 
this mineral patch inside of his own main base. The battle cruisers have made themselves known to the EMP catch them. The EMP caught them. Wait, two of them. Wait. I can't click on you because you're all stacked up, though. Okay. Some Yamato available. Maybe. Actually, no. We don't have the energy for Yamato yet. Just kidding. This is intense. I don't know who's going to win this thing. I'm looking at it. Ah, but the tanks are exposed. The Goliaths aren't covering them. Battle cruisers have to pull back. Yamatoing. Oh, what do you want a Yamato? It's kind of overkill to Yamato a Goliath, and Yamatoing a science vessel kind of feels like a waste too. Yamatoing other battle cruisers is the thing, because you don't waste any of that damage from the Yamato generally, but if there are no other battle cruisers to attack, what do you do? What are your priority targets here? Somebody knows. Somebody in the comments knows right now. Yeah, as this game continues to be underway, and I see MP, I want to thank Lazaros for, again, sending me this replay pack. It's been a lot of fun. I can't believe I'm almost through it here. Again, it was years. Okay, so we auto a tank. It's been years since he sent it to me, and I'm just now getting through it because I wanted to savor it. I didn't just want to bust through all the Gosu replays in a couple weeks. I wanted them to come and be a fun treat and a fun surprise every once in a while, and I think that's where we are with this, I think. Anyone who's been here for a few years and they see the Gosu tag, they know they're in for something interesting. Tanks getting shot off on the Goliaths. Goliaths getting shot off, shots off on battle cruisers. 187 and 138 supply. At some point, Fanta's just going to be su supply blocked and he's just going to have to go. He's not going to have to go, but he's going to be compelled to because he knows he's ahead of Didong. Or he should be if he's maxed out. And again, this extra income is helping him achieve that goal. But how are we all the way back up to 193 supply? This is crazy. Oh, no. He just left his tanks completely undefended to try to sneak down. Oh, but the engineering base sees it. The sneak down to the south side is noticed by Fanta. Tank set up. Battle cruisers can't handle all of these Goliaths, though. What they can do is maybe come along this top side and try to pick away at them, but the tanks are like, no. The battle cruisers are like, okay, Goliaths, you win this round. Another battle cruiser on the way. We've got two more that have recently joined the party. Gosh, this is incredible. This is a really good game. I don't know about the choice to come down this way from Didong, but he's got himself a situation. He's really going to be... It's hard to break him. I like it. It's fine. He's just down 50 supply, and coming back from this from Didong is going to be extremely hard, if not impossible at this point. Maybe if Fanta throws this by kind of wandering his tanks into the enemy tanks and losing them all. Or, you know, losing all his BCs because he wandered them into a position where Goliath could chase them down and kill them all. This is kind of amazing, actually. Oh, pushing right side, left side. Losing a few tanks for just about nothing there is D-Dong. Not entirely what you want to see, is it? No, Battlecruisers took a lot more hits than they wanted to there, but I think... Did any of them die? I'm not sure any of them died. Once again... You're modeling down a couple tanks there, very carefully taking some Goliath hits in the process. I'm really surprised he hasn't just sent a couple units over here to wipe this out. I understand there's a Vulture there, but like one Goliath wandering over would kill everything. It's just if you have battle cruisers and your opponent doesn't have battle cruisers, it's very difficult. Really difficult to pull this thing off. Didong, he just doesn't have the money to make the battle cruisers that Fanta has. The extra refineries he has access to. Well, a refinery, possibly just one, but still. His Goliath count is not as heavy because he made battle cruisers. It's a choice that he made. All right, is it time? Is it time to engage? <laughs> the scans are real, ladies and gentlemen. The realest of the realest.
EMP, it's dynamite. EMP, the enemy science vessels and the battle cruisers. That was so good. Okay, that was so, 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 so good. Some really sick science vessel stuff, but it's still, it's 174 to 108 supply. There we go. So Fanta's like, all right, I'm going to send some of my army up this way, wipe out this little bit of income that Didong's trying to roll with. This is mining out. He's going to starve him to death. This is a starving to death play here from Fanta. It's not a strategy we see a ton of in StarCraft. It's, yeah, I guess it is. Is you kill enemy bases, you starve them out, right? But just the slow, steady patience never really did much to deny bases except for the six o'clock one. And I don't know, like I love the setup for Didong here, but every time I look at the supply, he's down more. He's down like 70 supply now, which is not where you wanna be. Fanta's just kind of casually wandering up the top left, killing whatever he wants to. There's nothing to stop him from doing that at all. There are some missile turrets here and whatever. Here's the go time. It is go time from D-Dong, wandering into sieged up siege tanks. Also trying to deal with the battle cruisers on the right side. They are just attacking with impunity though. The Goliath count gets wiped out. Siege tanks had a lot to do with that and that's your GG. Our winner in an hour and 16 minutes and 14 seconds is Fanta. Wow, that was definitely a Gosu TVT. Tons of fun. Battle cruisers, Goliaths, vultures, science vessels, race, tanks. Oh my. Really, really fun time there today. That was fantastic. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. I thought it was great. So yeah, Fanta set this thing off to get the tone to win. Right? By taking the 6 o'clock base, which doesn't belong to him. It belonged to Didong, but he took it first. Mined from it for a while. Couldn't protect it forever. And ended up losing it, but then took it back again, which was huge. And then able to hold on to his other half of the map. Right? Was this under attack? A lot of the game. 100% yes. Did this base die once? It did, but he replaced it. 12 o'clock. Never got bothered. Thanks to the million missile turrets he placed here. Really smart stuff. And then he was just able to also augment his income by continuing to mine from these right side mineral patches uh, and keep Didong off the left side ones as much as he could. Resources lost here are going to favor Fanta because, yes, he was able to get more income, but not enough to where it allowed him to have such an economic and such an army value advantage there. But yeah, end of the day, Didong recognized he was mined out here. He lost all of his income here. He had 22 minerals to his name. He needed to try to force an engagement. He couldn't win it, and he couldn't replace his army, and he tapped out. That's it. It's a very simple GG. We don't get many, many super simple GGs on this, uh, in this game, but sometimes we do. End of the day there. Whoa. Whoa. Our score's messed up. Is that because it's an over an hour long? <laughs> oh no! I've never seen this before. Oh, this is totally, totally messed up. They have the exact same very small score of 600 apiece. Hilarious. Why? I don't know. But hey, that's fine. I really wanted to... I really wanted to see... Okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll... Maybe reload the replay, fast forward to the end, and then maybe we'll add something to the end. Uh, maybe we'll splice something in. All right. But hey, if not, good game to Fanta. That was a very, very well played, super duper long TBT. Didong played very well as well. But again, there had to be a winner and Fanta was the winner. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Root War Remastered. And a Gosu Gamers replay. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.